After university, it took me several months and over 300 applications to land my first data science graduate scheme. In hindsight, I could have done things a lot better, which is exactly what I plan to share with you in this video. Let's get into it. Before even thinking of applying for data science internships or graduate schemes, it's really important that you get some basic understanding of data science and machine learning. Now, I'm not saying you need to be some sort of whiz in reinforcement learning, but understanding the basics will basically help you when you're applying for the role and it will also confirm whether data science is a career that you see yourself in. The best way to introduce yourself to data science and machine learning is to follow some sort of roadmap. I've created several in the past, which I'll link on screen here, so I recommend you check them out. In general, you should gain knowledge in the following areas, Python, SQL, mathematics and statistics, and supervised and unsupervised learning. Learning those four key areas will be a really good baseline for your future career growth. Again, you don't need to be an expert in all these things. You're applying for entry level roles, so they don't expect you to know everything. However, doing this work and having this baseline knowledge shows that you're interested in the field, which is something employers love to see. The final and most important thing is to make sure that you do projects alongside the studying. Chances are, if you're applying for graduate schemes or internships, you probably don't have any data science experience. So the best way to showcase your skills is through doing projects. Try to do various projects that use different algorithms to solve different problems. And one mistake I made is that I had too many shallow projects. I often think it's better to prioritize quality over quantity. So have some really good projects around two or three that are really interesting and really detailed and cover the problem really well. Because those interesting kind of quality projects are really useful when it comes to discussing them in the interview stage. Another thing you should do before even applying is to make sure you craft your resume. I again have a whole separate video explaining the perfect way to create your data science resume. I'll link your screen here in case you want to check it out. However, the main points are make sure your resume is a page because recruiters haven't got time to go over multiple pages. Try to create it in LaTeX if you can. I personally think LaTeX looks a lot nicer than things like Google Docs or Word. So if you can use LaTeX, then I highly recommend it. Add a skill section right at the top of your resume detailing all your technical abilities. And when you do rank these technical abilities, don't use things like star ratings or say you're advanced. Use language like proficient with or experience with. These are a lot better and sets the standards a lot nicer. Add projects that you've done and a few sentences describing what they did and the technologies that you used. Add in your degree, particularly for the STEM subject because many graduate schemes and internships will require this. And finally, have a hobbies and activities section to show that you're kind of a well-rounded person and not some sort of data science robot. After reviewing hundreds of resumes, the above list I just gave really does make a huge difference. So make sure you do them. I also have my own resume template, which I'll leave in the description below for you to check out. After you've got your basic data science skills and you've got your resume done, it's now time to think about the application process. When applying, I think it's very useful to have a clear criteria of jobs that you will accept and jobs that you won't accept. For example, some things that I use to kind of break down exactly which role will suit me is location. So for me, I knew I wanted to be in London, so that's kind of a deal breaker for me. For you, it may be you live in a different country or you want to go to a different city or you want to work hybrid. All of these things may affect your decision but it's important to be clear on exactly where and when you want to work. The second one is pay. Now, majority of grad schemes are paid because they're pretty much full-time positions, whereas internships are not always paid. So again, you've got to decide if this is a deal breaker for you in wanting to get that internship. Another thing to consider is the type of role you're willing to accept. I was dead set on becoming a data scientist and that's the only thing I would have taken. But you may be willing to accept a data analyst or a data engineer position. Again, it's really up to you. For the role I was looking for, I want to ensure that the requirements listed that machine learning or statistical modeling would be part of the job because this is something I was really interested in and to me that was also another deal breaker. Another thing to consider is what type of organization do you want to work in? 
Do you want to work in a large established company or a startup? Again, both of them have their pros and cons, and it's really up to you to decide what's best for you. And finally, for me, I didn't really care what industry I worked in, but you may want to work in finance or banking, for example. Again, it's up to you to decide if this is something that is kind of a deal breaker for you or not. Once you have all these preferences set, you can then start looking for jobs with these filters on to make sure that you're only getting roles that are applicable for your criteria. Now, some people may say that you should tailor your application to each company you apply for. While I do think this is great advice and it's probably the ideal method, I just don't think it's feasible for a lot of people. If you're at university, you likely have so many other kind of commitments like your university work, sports, coursework, etc. You just haven't got enough time all the time to dedicate hours applying for each role. It just isn't going to work for you. So this is why I prefer taking the volume approach and basically applying for loads of roles. Personally, I applied for over 300 positions and sure, it may be a little excessive, but it worked for me. And along that process, I learned a lot and got better throughout. So if you're kind of tight for time, then I definitely recommend going for the volume approach and applying for any position you like the look of and not worrying too much about tailing your CV to each specific company. Data science interviews vary a lot between companies. We are likely to have a coding interview, a technical interview, and a cultural interview, no matter where you go. For the coding interviews, for many entry-level positions, companies will typically have a problem in either lead code or hacker rank. So I recommend you kind of practice problems on these platforms so that you're well-prepared come the interview. This is what I did, and I was able to pass most of these problems, and I'm by far from a good programmer. You may also receive a take-home assessment or case study to do. Now with these, the interviewers or employers are not necessarily after the results. They're more looking about how you approach a problem and how you solve it. So during the interview, they'll typically ask you questions about why you did certain things. And so when you do solve these case studies, really take time and really understand what you're doing so that you can be able to explain it really clearly back to the interviewer and show your thought process throughout the problem. For the technical and cultural interviews, I again have a whole separate video explaining exactly how to pass these. But in general, these are the following key points to remember. Study the company, particularly its cultural values, and make sure when you respond to a question, you align your answer to those values. Look online on places like Glassdoor and Indeed for any past interview questions to give you some early on insight. Plan key examples and broad answers to basic questions. Know the projects you have done inside out because you're probably going to be questioned on them. And finally, try to be animated and charismatic throughout. I appreciate some of these tips can be quite difficult to do and it requires a lot of practice. But if you can nail all those five things, then you'd be in a really good position to pass your interview. The whole process I just mentioned is the standard procedure of landing an internship or graduate scheme. However, you can do other things to leverage yourself and stand out in the application. For example, if you have a really good network or even if you know anyone in the field, just simply reach out to them and ask them if you could do some paid or even unpaid work during the summer as an intern or even a grad. The worst I could say is no, but in the best case scenario, you get an internship or graduate scheme. If you are a university student, ask your department or supervisor if there's any summer projects that you can get involved with. Chances are there'll be something for you to do. And finally, try to take university modules that have some sort of computational modeling element because this would be a really good project to add to your CV. These were all examples of leveraging your current position. And you can take it even further by making your application stand out by doing things like writing technical articles and posting on them online. This shows that you're interested in the field, which is something employers love to see. You can do Kaggle competitions and try to do well in them. This shows your data science abilities and how good you are in the field. And finally, you can create a detailed website or portfolio to showcase all your data science abilities. These are all straightforward ideas, but I promise you many people applying for graduate schemes and internships won't have them. It's all about using the Pareto principle and doing that extra 20% of work will get you ahead of 80% of applicants. Applying for graduate schemes and internships in data science at the moment can be quite challenging, 
particularly the really tough job market out there. However, if you apply these tips, then you'll greatly increase your chances of landing that first role. If you want more data science advice like this, then make sure you check out my weekly newsletter, Vision and Data. I send it every Monday morning, and it's all about my thoughts and experiences as a practicing data scientist. If that sounds interesting, then I'll leave a link in the description below for you to check it out.